Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining cold air intakes and the logic behind them. So basically a cold air intake is used in place of the stock intake to enable the engine to pull in cooler air. Now the idea is that you want to get air um, as close to the outside temperature as possible and if you have your air intake close to your engine and your engine's really hot you're going to be affecting the temperature of the intake charge and by increasing the temperature of the intake charge you're going to be lowering the amount of oxygen that you have available to burn and thus producing lower horsepower. So there are basically two ways you can do that. You can create sort of a snorkel that leads away from your air intake and goes to the outside air and pulls in outside air or you can relocate your filter uh, somewhere that has cooler air and isn't affected by the warm uh, engine. Now I'm not here to argue whether or not a cold air intake is actually going to make a difference on your car. What I am going to do though is explain the logic behind it and see why it is kind of a feasible thing if the cold air uh, intakes can actually do what they claim to do. So we're going to start off with the ideal gas law and we're going to treat air as an ideal gas. So PV equals NRT. Pressure times volume equals the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature. So N and R are constants. So if you have uh, a certain state um, of, of a certain pressure, let's say, and you change that pressure, then you can relate uh, the volume and temperature with this equation here by eliminating this since it's always going to be a constant. So you can always say PV over T equals PV over T. So PV over T of state 1 is equal to PV over T of state 2. Now, for our example, we're just going to say that pressure is constant. That way it makes it pretty easy to see the, the, uh, how changing the temperature affects uh, the amount of oxygen available. So, now we've eliminated it down, so we've got volume over temperature of state 1 is equal to volume over temperature of state 2. So let's say we have a 4 liter engine and it is operating, it's pulling in air uh, directly into the cylinder at 27 degrees uh, Celsius. Now, the ideal gas law requires you to use temperature in Kelvin. So that's degrees in Celsius plus 273. So, 27 degrees Celsius air going into the engine, 4 liter engine. Alright, so what happens if we increase the temperature of the air by 10 degrees? Well, that same amount of air will take up 4.13 liters uh, of, of volume. So what this means is by reducing uh, the temperature by 10 degrees you can have the same amount of air in a smaller space. So you've got 4.13 divided by 4.0 and that's going to give you 1.03 repeating. So you're going to have a 3.3 percent increase in volume of air just by lowering the temperature 10 degrees Celsius. So what that means is, since you have 3.3% more air, you, ha you can inject, uh, well, first of all, 3.3% more air, you're going to have 3.3% more oxygen. With 3.3% more oxygen, you can inject 3.3% more fuel. Now, assuming the relationship between fuel burned and horsepower is linear, which I'm sure it probably isn't, but just for the purposes of this video, we'll just claim that it is, that it's exactly linear, the amount of energy you create is linear with the amount of fuel that you burn. So if you have a 300 horsepower engine and your cold air intake uh, manages to keep the temperature of the air coming into the engine going directly into the cylinder 10 degrees Celsius cooler then you would actually be you could actually produce 310 horsepower a 3.3 percent increase. So that's the logic behind a cold air intake and of course it varies uh, by product you're not going to find one that magically increases your horsepower uh, by 50% or anything crazy claims like that. But it is actually a logical uh, solution to increasing horsepower if you can actually reduce the intake uh, temperature charge. So just so you can get a frame of reference, this is the air intake on my car. And what a cold air intake would probably do is remove the silencer box and then try to relocate it. It's actually located in a pretty good spot. Uh, the engineers really know what they're doing, but it may try to relocate it perhaps beneath the bumper or put out a snorkel that uh, channels in some outside air. 